Good evening and welcome to Law School Application Process Essentials Top Admissions Questions webinar. I'm Nicole Vilches, Assistant Dean for Admissions. And I'm Gabriela Amador, Director of Admissions. We appreciate you joining us. Tonight's webinar is designed to answer some of the top admissions questions that we receive each year. We'll begin by answering a list of our top questions and then we'll open it up for your questions. We hope tonight's presentation will provide you with useful information about the law school application process. So we're going to start with some of our top questions about the application process itself. And the first question is, when is the best time to apply for admission? So law school application deadlines vary. You can check with each law school about specific deadlines. It's always better to apply early in the admission cycle, if possible. However, you should apply when it is the best time for you. We recommend starting to prepare your law school applications in the fall and applying by January if possible. If you're not able to apply before January, you should apply as soon as you can. Our suggested application deadline is March 15th. This is a suggested deadline and we will continue to accept applications throughout the spring and summer. The March LSAT is accepted at Chicago Kent, but the score will arrive later in our application cycle. You should check with each school that you apply to for their specific deadlines. The next question, what makes a good personal statement? So a good personal statement is well written and free of grammatical errors. You'll want to have as many people as possible review your personal statement and check it for any errors. Your personal statement should highlight your strengths and it is your chance to connect with the admissions committee on a more personal level. We recommend using your own voice and telling us about yourself and what makes you unique and a competitive applicant for law school in your personal statement. Next question is, if I have a weakness in my application, should I address it? And if you have a weakness, we do recommend addressing it, taking responsibility for it, but you don't need to spend more time than necessary explaining it. The most important thing is to give the admissions committee assurance that this is not typical and will not be an issue for you in law school. There's a couple of places where you could offer this explanation. I think an addendum is usually the most effective place. This allows you to address the particular issue um, and not take away from your personal statement. In general, you wanna keep your personal statement on a positive note and use that to sell your strengths to the committee. In some cases, it may make sense to work this into your personal statement. So you would use your judgment to decide which is the best for you. Next question, question number four. Who should write my letters of recommendation? So we suggest that your letters of recommendation be written by a college professor who is familiar with you and your intellectual abilities. However, if you have been out of school for a few years, it may be better to submit a letter of recommendation from a supervisor or someone who knows you well and can speak to your intellectual abilities and work ethic. And next question, if I've been out of school for over five years, how will my work experience be considered and do my undergraduate grades still matter? So if you've been out of school for a while, the admissions committee will take into consideration what you've done since graduation. Your undergraduate coursework will still be considered and your grades do still matter. However, you'll be able to enhance your application by highlighting any skills you feel may contribute to your law school performance. You can also highlight your work experience or any graduate work that you've done. So next, we will talk about LSAT questions or we will discuss LSAT questions. Um, the next question will be, when should I take the LSAT? So ideally, you will want to take the LSAT by January for admission to the following fall semester. If you are taking a later exam, then you'll want to consider having your application materials submitted to LSAC prior to taking the LSAT if possible. Please keep in mind that deciding when to take the LSAT really depends on your individual schedule. Question number seven is how should I prepare for the LSAT? So first and foremost, you don't want to take the LSAT without preparing. You should plan to take the test one time and be sufficiently prepared when you take it. LSAC offers a free official LSAT preparation course in partnership with Khan Academy. So this should be your first resource for preparing for the LSAT. 
You can learn more about it at lsac.org or on the Khan Academy website at khanacademy.org slash prep slash LSAT. There are also a number of commercial LSAT preparation courses and LSAT prep guidebooks available, and some undergraduate schools may offer their own LSAT prep courses. Whatever method you use, it's important to spend time becoming familiar with the test and with the various question types, and then be sure to take several full-length practice exams under timed conditions to become familiar with what your experience will be on the day of the exam. If you'll be applying during the 2019-2020 application cycle, you should also be aware that the LSAT will transition to a digital test beginning in July of 2019. You can learn more about the upcoming changes to the exam at lsac.org. The next question, should I apply before or after I receive my LSAT score? So this depends on when you're taking the LSAT. Uh, are you taking the LSAT early in the admission cycle? If so, then you may want to focus on studying for the LSAT and applying after the exam. But if you're taking the LSAT later in the admission cycle, you may want to begin working on your law school applications before taking the exam. Please note that if you submit your application before taking the LSAT, our office will not begin to review any portion of your application until there is an LSAT score on file for you. We do have a question on our application that asks if you plan to take a future LSAT and whether or not you would like us to hold your file until the new score arrives. This allows you to apply before you retake the test and puts your file on hold until your new score arrives. So question nine, what do law schools do with multiple LSAT scores? So at Chicago Kent will take into consideration all of your LSAT scores, but preference is given to the higher score. If there's a major difference between scores, we recommend addressing that in an addendum. That allows us to understand the context in which you earned each of the scores, and it gives us confidence that the highest score is most representative of your abilities and performance on the LSAT. The next question is, uh, deciding to retake the LSAT is a, I'm sorry. Next question is, should I retake the LSAT? So deciding to retake the LSAT is a very personal decision. You'll want to weigh the benefits of submitting a letter of uh, a later application versus applying earlier in the application cycle. You should only retake the LSAT if you feel very sure that your score will increase. Now we're gonna answer a few questions about the GRE. Um, as you probably know, there are some law schools that have started to accept GRE scores in place of LSAT scores or as another option to submitting an LSAT score. A Chicago Kent is one of those schools. We started accepting GRE scores in uh, April of the last admission cycle. So the first question is, should I take the LSAT or the GRE? So currently, the LSAT is, is still the most widely accepted admissions test for law school. There are only about 30 law schools that accept GRE scores for admission. So therefore, if you want the most flexibility in applying to law schools and you want to consider the widest range of schools, the LSAT will give you the most options. Now, this may change if more law schools start accepting GRE scores in the future. If you're considering other graduate programs or have already taken the GRE and are comfortable applying only to the schools that are currently accepting GRE scores, then this may be the right option for you. Question 12, can I replace my LSAT score with a GRE score? The LSAT is considered the primary test for admissions purposes. If you have a valid LSAT score on file, it will automatically be sent to us with your CAS report when you apply and the score will be considered as part of your admissions process. You can ask to have your GRE score considered as supplemental information, but you must submit a written request to us in order for us to include it in your admissions file. We will not automatically request your GRE score if, if you have an LSAT score on file. But this policy may be different at other schools, so you should check with each school when you're applying. And the next question is, what is a competitive GRE score? So this is a, it's a difficult question because as with the LSAT, we're looking at a, a range of factors and not just the test score when we're making admissions decisions. But for Chicago Kent, a competitive score on the GRE is typically a combined score of at least 300, 
and an analytical writing score of at least 3.5. We put particular emphasis on the quantitative score and we're generally looking for a score of at least 150 on that section. However, as I said with the LSAT, your test score is just one component of your admissions file. And we're going to consider everything in your file when making our admissions decision. So you want to use these guidelines as just very general guidelines and not as absolutes. And now the ultimate question, what can I do to make my application stand out? So there are a few things that you can do to make your application stand out for the admissions committee. Number one, apply early. Ideally, you will submit your application as early as possible in the process. It is best to apply well in advance of the deadline. Later on, the pool of candidates will be larger and many offers of admission will have already gone out. Um, so things may become more competitive. You also want to make sure that your application provides a complete picture of who you are and what you offer as a law school candidate. So as you review your materials, make sure that each of the different components and pieces of your application are really selling those strengths that you think are most important for the admissions committee to know. If you notice there's any gaps, make sure you fill that information in. Another way to make your application stand out is to carefully choose your recommenders and make sure they know you well and will provide a strong and compelling recommendation. Don't focus too much on titles and instead focus on how well the recommender knows you and your skills and abilities. You also want to make sure you're highlighting your unique qualities, interests, and passions. So law schools are interested in recruiting students with diverse backgrounds and interests. And so we're interested in learning this about you, even if it doesn't really directly relate to why you want to come to law school. We want to know what makes you unique. What's the unique perspective, interest, voice that you bring to the law school? So make sure you're sharing that information with us. And last but not least, uh, take advantage of opportunities to get to know the school and share why you are interested in the school somewhere in your application. This could be in your personal statement, an optional essay, or an addendum. So now we'd like to open things up for your questions. Uh, there is a questions box in the webinar software, and so you can type in your questions to that box, and we are happy to answer those questions for you. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to start typing in your questions and we will start to answer those. And again, you want to just type them right into the questions box. All right, so we've got our first question, which what is what is a typical LSAT score for a student who's admitted to Chicago Kent? Um, so as a sort of a general range, you can look at our admission statistics from our most recent entering class. This will give you a sense of the types of students who uh, were admitted. So our median LSAT in the 2018 class was a 157. The 25th to 75th spread ranged from a 151 to a 160. So that means a quarter of the students had LSATs of 151 and a below, quarter had LSATs of 160 and above. Um, on the GPA, because I'm sure some of you will wonder about that as well, uh, median GPA was a 3.44. Uh, the 25th, 75th spread was a 3.09 to a 3.64. So again, these give you a sense of kind of where the middle 50% of our class fell, but we are looking at everything when we make our admissions decisions. And with grades in particular, we're going to be looking at your entire academic transcript and how you did over time when we're um, reviewing your records. The next question is, how do law schools view graduate degrees when applying with a lower undergraduate GPA? So uh, a graduate degree will certainly strengthen your application. Um, we will still be looking at your undergraduate GPA, but a graduate degree will help strengthen your application so um, you can uh, feel confident in submitting your transcripts and knowing that the admissions committee will be reviewing those and taking that into consideration. Okay, so next question was, I have a canceled LSAT score uh, because I was ill um, and the, uh, let's see, the, so I'll be taking the, didn't have time to take the LSAT again, so I'll be taking the GRE in two weeks. Will the canceled LSAT score be taken into consideration or the new GRE? Um, so if you 
do not have any LSAT scores on file. That the L, What we'll see is that you took the LSAT but canceled the score. We won't actually get a score for you. Um, so in that case, we would be looking at just your GRE score because we don't have an LSAT score to consider in, as part of the admissions process. If, you, if the canceled score was in addition to an earlier score, then we would have to take that earlier LSAT score into consideration. So the next question is, how does a joint program uh, work? And does the school have scholarships or programs to help financially to pay for joint degrees? So when you are applying for admission, um, you can uh, inquire about our joint uh, degree programs, but the application process is separate. So you are first considered for admission to the law school and you are automatically considered for scholarships for um, the JD program. Once you enroll in the JD program or even prior to enrolling, you can submit an application to the joint degree that you're considering um, and it is a separate application process, but you will not begin taking courses toward that degree until your second year. Um, but you would be considered for scholarships for that program as well, but it would be a separate admissions office that is reviewing your application. And, and we will help facilitate that, um, that process. So if there's any components in your JD application that we can utilize um, to facilitate the process for admission to the other uh, degree, then we will help uh, help you with that. Okay, so our next question is about retaking the LSAT. If I decide to take the LSAT again, for example, in January, after submitting my application and confirming that I want it reviewed, would you reconsider admission and financial aid? Um, so yes, we definitely can do that. And it, the process would vary a little bit just depending on where you're at in the process. So it could be that you've told us to uh, go ahead and review your application and as it's going through the review process the new score comes out if we you don't have a decision on it yet on your application yet we would then consider that new score um, and then make our admissions decision if we've already given you an admissions decision and particularly if you've been admitted and awarded a scholarship and then you have a new LSAT score come out we can take a look again to see if that new LSAT score would impact the scholarship determination so next question is, is it possible for your LSAT score to go into the application after it's sent in? So maybe you wanted to take the January LSAT, but go ahead and submit the application. Right, so you can apply um, before you receive your LSAT score. Um, if, you, if that is your first time taking the exam, then we wouldn't do anything with your application other than wait for your LSAT score to come in. And then we would process your application, complete it, and forward it to the admissions committee for review. All right, and, so, and also the next question was just sort of to clarify, um, you know, what happens if somebody submits an application and there aren't is no, no score. We won't look at the application if we don't have all of the information that we need. So your file would just sit in an incomplete pending status until we had all the information. The next question is how are um, two, how would two canceled LSAT scores be viewed in the admissions process? Would this be a negative? You know, I don't think it'd be a negative, but I um, would, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to um, let the admissions committee know why you have two canceled scores. I think one is, um, you know, uh, not that out of the ordinary, but two, you may want to let the admissions committee know um, if there's anything that you feel that would be worth noting that you could uh, put it in a separate addendum. This next question is, uh, is having a job outside of the legal profession a problem? Uh, and not at all. I mean, obviously, you hopefully aren't letting the job take away from your undergraduate studies. Obviously, we want you to be doing well in school, but um, many applicants work during undergrad. We have applicants that are working full time and then are deciding to go to law school. Some of them are coming into our evening program. So it's something that we're really familiar with seeing and having work experience can be a real positive in your application. Applicants come from a variety of backgrounds, so we're not necessarily looking for legal work experience. You may have work experience in a completely unrelated field, and that's fine. Um, we're really just looking for you know, what is it that you bring to the table and realizing that a lot of people need to work. That may be how you're funding your studies. So it, um, definitely, I would say, is probably on the whole a positive thing in your application. 
and not having legal work experience will not be a negative at all. So next question is how do your evening part-time part-time evening and part-time day programs compare and is the time of day the only difference? I would say so. I think the main difference between the two programs um, is definitely the schedule. Um, we have our faculty, our full-time faculty teach in both divisions, so you would have the same professors, the same coursework. It is mainly it is the time of day that you're attending class that I would say is the main difference. And, and of course, you're taking one less course as a part-time student each semester. Um, I would say those are the main differences. So next question is, uh, um, will a round of application review occur before um, Christmas vacation happens? Definitely. So we have not released any decisions yet, but we are hoping to do that um, this month. So we should have some decisions going out in November, and then it's on an ongoing basis. Our university is closed for a week between Christmas and New Year uh, holidays, so obviously no decisions will go out that week, but we should have decisions going out before that, and then again when we're back in January. So we realize everyone's anxious for a decision, and we do try to get them out as quickly as possible so that you can hear back from us. That sort of leads well into the next question. Uh, how long after your application is submitted can you expect to receive an admissions decision? So generally it's about a three-week turnaround. Um, this can vary depending on the time of the year. So at the beginning of the year, it may be a little bit slower um, uh, when we begin accepting applications uh, in September. And it may slow down again when there's a surge in applications closer to our uh, application deadline in March. Um, but generally, you can expect a decision in three to four weeks from the date that your application was made complete. Now, next question is how long, uh, or actually, if you had to withdraw from a graduate program, do you suggest adding an addendum to explain this and would this hurt my application? So I think it is a, it's probably a good idea. I think as a sort of a general rule, if there's something you think the admissions committee might have a question about, it's probably good to address it. You don't need to go into great detail. Um, you provide only as much information as you're comfortable with, but it's probably better to offer an explanation than to lead us, leave us wondering what happened. So you could just explain why you decided uh, to withdraw. It might just be that you decided the program wasn't the right fit for you. Um, that would just answer any questions that the committee might have. And if you do have any additional questions, please feel free to submit those. Um, I thought of one that sort of relates to that last question, which are things that the committee might have questions about. Um, one of the sets of questions on the application are what are known as character and fitness questions. So we're asking about things like past criminal convictions, disciplinary action in undergrad. Uh, at your undergrad school. If you need to answer yes to any of those, um, again, that's a place where you offer an explanation, let the committee know what happened, what you've learned from it, why this won't happen again. Um, it's best to be very forthcoming with those, answer them fully and completely, and that will um, provide us with the information that we need in regards to those questions. So it looks like that may be all of the questions that we have. Um, so we appreciate you joining us today for the webinar. Um, we realize that you may have some additional questions after the webinar ends. So um, we welcome you to contact the Office of Admissions. We are always happy to answer those questions for you. You can reach us at admissions at kentlaw.iit.edu. Um, we also offer tours of the law school. We can set up appointments with an admissions counselor. So we're happy to um, provide you with any information that you need to learn more about Chicago Kent. And we wish you well in the application process and hope to receive your application applications. Thanks and have a great evening.